Good morning, guys. How's everybody doing out there today? Come and cook breakfast with me. So I'm getting ready to cook bref breakfast for Seneca here in the truck. Seneca, where are Yay. we right now? We're in um, Alvarado, Texas. And why are we here? <laughs> trying to pick up a load. And there is no loads around here. I mean, there is, but they're not paying absolutely anything worth taking. Mm -hmm. So. What do you think we're gonna do? Sit here? Um, we're gonna <laughs> sit until we find a load to take. That's what we're gonna do. So for us, we honestly much rather sit down for a day or two if we have to, but we will not take loads that make no sense for us. We will not take no dollar and some change, you know, loads. Like that's not gonna happen. So if we gotta sit down today, then that's what we do. I am yep. not about to be donating money to these brokers out there. Like it's just not happening. So plus it's a it's a nice day. I don't mind sitting here if we need to. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna get ready to cook breakfast. Um, come join me. See what I'm gonna make for Seneca. All right, let me get my basket out. I need my towel first. So this is what I do. I have this towel that I laid um, on top of the bed to make sure that I don't get anything on the bed, uh, on the sheets or anything like that. So. And then I get my basket out with all my condiments and everything. So it's kind of a process, you know, to get everything um, out and ready, but you know, that's, I make it work for us out here. So, let me plug this in. sanitizer so we're gonna do some eggs some oops, got a little bit of water you made it down some bait some turkey bacon And so when I'm using the skillet, um, I usually unplug the refrigerator. I don't like having the skillet and the refrigerator plugged in at the same time. So what I will do is just unplug the refrigerator before I turn um, the skillet on. Just to make sure that it doesn't uh, mess with the, uh, um, what's that thing called? Um, what? The, um, the inverter? Yes. That. Just to make sure that it doesn't mess with them. <laughs> Sorry, I can't think. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. So here's the. I got my knife here. Oh, 
olive oil. That's all I use. I don't like using the oils or um, butter or anything like that. I don't use none of that stuff. Senegal, why uh, we don't have a garbage bag? So this is my fork for my uh, bacon, separate the bacon. That's that good turkey bacon. That good turkey bacon. So we don't we don't eat pork, so we don't do like like no pork bacon or anything no, like that. No. We don't do pork at all. We do like eat wet meat, you know, once in a while we do steaks. Um, however, we don't do pork at all. I don't know, it's just a thing. So we do turkey bacon, that's what we do. It's really good, like we, we really like it. So we're just gonna let that cook. Um, it takes about, I don't know, seven, 10 minutes to be ready. It doesn't take long. But um, we're just trying to make sure that we cook in the truck, or I'm trying to make sure I cook in the truck. I do all of the cooking. So Seneca's the driver. I don't drive, I don't have a CDL. I don't wanna get a CDL because I don't like driving. I don't know, maybe that will change in the future. I, I don't know. But for now, I, uh, it's not a thing for me to like, get a CDL and drive this big truck. I don't feel too comfortable doing that. <laughs> don't worry about it. I got it. <laughs> I know. I, it. I know. So I am the dispatcher. I do all of the administration, all of the paperwork. Um, I book all of the loads. I deal with the brokers. And I do all of the cooking in the truck. So Seneca, uh, he... He has to, you know, he drives. They do all the driving. Yeah, all, all the, the loading and unloading. Yeah, uh, securing loads and all of that stuff. So, teamwork. That's how we make it work for us out here. And so, um, for us, we are living in our truck full time now. We recently went back to Florida and we got rid of our um, condo there. We sold all of our furniture. We sold everything that we had in our condo. Even my car. Even Seneca's car. So we only kept one car. We kept my <laughs> car. So we have it in a uh, storage down there in Florida. Um, but we sold everything else because what, what, like, there was, it just didn't make sense for us to be paying, what, like $2,000 a month in rent? Yeah. For a house. place that we was only going to be using, what, maybe once a month? Yep. It's like, it makes no sense whatsoever. So, you know, for us, it works because it's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we do have kids, but we don't have small kids at home. So it's just the two of us. It makes, you know, things easier. We can, you know, move however we need to move. We don't got to worry about, you know, kids in the truck or anything like that, you know, or kids at home. So, so far it has been, it's, it's been good. Like, what do you think? It has. I mean, it's, 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 um... It's freeing. Yeah. You know, I don't have to worry. We don't have to worry about things. We yeah. just do, you know, whatever we need to do. So. Yeah. Like for me, I feel like if it feels like it was liberating, getting rid of all of the stuff, all of the furniture and everything, just not having that pressure of having to go back home to check on things and all of that. Like not having that. 
Yeah. I, I feel relieved about it, honestly. And we're like very uh, minimalist people. Like we don't, I don't need a lot of stuff. You know, being a female, I don't need a lot of stuff out here. I'm super basic. What you see is what you get. I am not a makeup queen or anything like that. You know, I'm not judging the ones that are, you know, beautiful girls with a lot of makeup out there, whatever, but that's not my thing, you know? So for me, you know, living in the, in the truck and having just the bare minimum, it works just fine. Just give me a pair of sweatpants, t-shirts, and t tennis shoes, and I'm fine. Like, I'm good to go. I like that. <laughs> I know you do. Seneca be trying to, he has me looking all kinds of hot mess out here with what I be wearing. Sometimes I be wearing Seneca's t-shirts, his hoodies, and they're like so long, they look like a dress on me. Look but good on you. They look good on me. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> So I've been looking a hot mess out here, but you know, that's fine. Well, I'm not, we're not out here to impress anybody. We're out here to make money. Like for us, we, you know, I guess the purpose in life for us with this business was to be able to spend time together and, uh, uh, and make money. So now we are together 24 seven and you know. 24 seven. <laughs> like 24 seven. And uh, so yeah, just trying to make money, you know, out here and enjoy, you know, that the time that you have, like when you're sitting down, like how we are right now, it's just, we're just chilling, you know, we just have some coffee, we're getting breakfast ready, the Seneca looking at the loads over there, and uh, you know, we just, we're just trying to, you know, just trying to do what we're going to do and uh, see where, um, see where we go today. If we get a load, fine, if not, then we'll sit here and, and start you know looking again tomorrow so can't get desperate no we done that before and then what happened tell them what happened when we got desperate when you get desperate um you may find yourself in a state or area where it's no loads around you so what happens is you get in the stand even longer in that state or that particular truck stop rest area and you lose the money so, um, when you're looking at loads, you, you want to be strategic about it. You don't want to just take the, the first thing that pays money. You got to investigate or research um, the drop-off location. So, and that helps. Yeah, you gotta, you know, only because you see um, like a good paying load. So there is some good paying loads from here. However, the areas that they're going to there is nothing there or if there is something there they're paying what like a dollar and some change per mile we don't we're we don't do that we're not going to do that so we are not going to be killing our equipment uh just to make gas money to make fuel money that's not going to happen that's not how we operate we're here to make a profit not to just break even so you know, those are some of the things that you gotta keep in mind when you're booking a loan. You gotta make sure that you're researching that area that you're gonna be going to. So, we did get this spray one time and we learned our lesson the hard way. I don't remember where we was at. But anyways, I think we had been sitting down for like two days and we was just like, all right, let's just go to whatever area. So we ended up, we ended up, up in the mountains in Wyoming. That's where we got stuck, right? It was way over there. Talking about when we went to yeah, Nevada well, we had it to see No, it was the one when we, yeah, yeah, before that. So we was like in Wyoming. Or we something. was in Wyoming. Yeah. yeah, we got stuck up in the mountains in Wyoming in a dead area. There was like absolutely nothing there, like no loads, nothing. So we sat there for like two days, couldn't get a load, and there was nothing. So, we, like, after the third day, we got desperate. We, um, Ended up picking a load in a, um, somewhere. I don't remember it where. Was somewhere. somewhere. And it, was, and it, yeah. it, we took that load. Um, I think it was the one that we took to Nevada. Was it the one to Nevada? I think it anyway, was. Anyway, so yeah. we took that and we ended up in the worst. It was one in California. Was it California? That's what it, was. it was somewhere yeah. over there. But we ended up in a worse situation than, than we was before we started with that load. And it was. It was uh, because we act their own desperation. That that's all it was. So it was a good learning lesson for us of what not to do again. So now, 
we, with the mentality that if we gotta sit down for two, three days, it's whatever, you know? Like that's what we're gonna do, but we're not going to areas where there is nothing. Yeah, just save the money, save the stress. Yeah. Because the desperation can get you in a, in, in a bad position. Yeah, you know, when, you're, when you're own operator, because you don't have a dispatch, you know, you don't have, you're on your own, so you gotta have a good instinct about how to move. Yeah. And if you got a bad instinct, you could get end up losing a lot of money, a lot of wasted gas, beating your truck up, you have a breakdown, and you're not, you know, you can't afford it. <laughs> so you want to keep, you know, the, the, the maintenance and the fuel levels down. Absolutely. So it's just, you know, learning from your mistakes. I guess, you know, that's that's all it is. Pretty much. And uh, you know, for us, we are new to um, to the owner operator life. We have only been doing it for so we got our authority in March. However, we didn't start running loads until April. We purchased our truck in March, picked it up, got home to Florida then the truck was having problems with um what was it doing it was not starting right away right it was um taking a long time to start to start yeah. yeah like whenever you was turning the key it was like click 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 and then and then it will start but it was taking too long to do that so the truck was um still under warranty so we um you know call the, the place where we you know purchase it from and all of that and um, you know they told us you take it to Freightliner you know still under the warranty and you know see what you know anything that they gotta fix if the warranty doesn't cover it we'll cover it so we took it to Freightliner and oh my goodness the truck sat there for what like a month three weeks three weeks it sat there for three weeks before they got to it brand well we just got it yeah it was not brand new but it was brand new to us yeah. So he sat there for about three weeks. They called us and said the truck is ready. We go over there. Seneca tried starting the truck and it's doing the same thing that it was doing they before. They didn't fix it. They didn't fix it. So it was super irritating, super frustrating. I actually kind of got into it with the, with the manager in there because I was like so irritated. I'm like, it's been sitting here for three damn weeks and you said that it was ready and like you didn't even fix anything. So anyways, they were like, okay, well, we'll check it again. So it took them an, about another week after that to like check it and get it ready. They actually fixed it at that time. But it was like, why didn't you fix it the first time? So it was about a month before we actually got the truck. You know, like we purchased it, it went straight to the shop. It took about a month for us to get it back. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, what happened after that? I don't remember. Um, we used to make um, short runs. Um, we finally got, um, I guess, a few runs. You know, that was local. Yeah. You know, power only. We didn't have our trailer yet, so um, yeah, we made a few runs around the Orlando area. A couple to actually Disney World. Yeah, I remember. I, I thought those. it was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, what else? We connected with a couple of, we, we actually got pretty lucky for being, you know, new to the business and new owner operators. So we connected with some local brokers from the Orlando area and uh, they were actually giving us, you know, like weekly loads and that really helped it, us a lot. It was one broker we had that was just, it was a direct contact, a direct relationship. And when you have that, um, that's, it's good to have a plug, you know, with the broker. Are you talking about Ross? I'm talking about Ross. Yeah. yeah. Ross used to feed us. So <laughs> he used to feed us a yeah. lot of loads. Like weekly, at least yeah. well, like three. Like, and it was like round trips. It was round trips from Apopka, to which Griffin. Griffin, to Griffin, Georgia, Georgia yeah. which uh, the truck stop where we was keeping our truck at the time, it was in Apopka. So we had like no deadhead miles at all. Well, like, it was like, like a five minute drive. <sighs> It was a five-minute drive up. around the corner. Yeah, it was like right around the corner. It was super convenient for us. And Zero dead here. Yeah. And so we was getting those, you know, those loads um, about three times a week. And it was a round trip to Georgia. 
so that you know that was so helpful at the beginning like i said when you're new you know some of the brokers don't want to work with you you know i tried many different work uh, brokers and they were like oh you're too new you know blah 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 the and i was like yeah the authority the authority is too new some brokers yeah. and companies they have a um a certain time like it could be 30 days 60 days 90. yeah some companies they want you to have your authority for six months before you can run look at their low board period so yeah so we, we was new to the game. So yeah. we, we had to start off, you know, slowly. Yeah. And uh, one, one uh, uh, tip that I'm gonna give you guys, and uh, it, this is what I did for us with our situation that actually helped us to build that relationship with uh, the broker in a pub cup. So I created a letter uh, explaining, you know, Seneca's background within trucking, and you know, I, I, it was like all his information within trucking. He had a lot of experience with trucking within the military, not the civilian world, but within the military. So I explained all of that in the letter. You know, I just said a little bit, a uh, little bit of background on, you know, my husband, which is the driver, and you know, I, I, I you know, put all of that in the letter. It's, you know, I said he, he has a lot of years of experience he knows he he has a lot of knowledge about trucks and equipment and this and that we just need you know somebody to trust us and so i actually sent that letter to the broker the local broker in a pub car. i emailed him that letter and i feel like that was a huge um help to get him to trust us with the load because after that he you know like when when we took the first load from him i sent him that letter you know, I finally got him to like give us the first load. I sent him the letter, and then you know I sent him an email, and I said, you know, I you know I, we will do our best to make sure that your load gets there on time. I will keep you informed. There was no tracking on the load, so I told him, I said, I make I'll make sure that I keep you informed, you know, with the load. So what I will do, um, you know, with uh, after Seneca picked up the load or whatever, I, I will email the broker and be like, Seneca's on his way. Seneca got to the receiver. Seneca's getting loaded. Seneca's rolling with the load he now. Departed. He departed. His ETA is this time. And then I will, you know, call Seneca and be like, hey, how far are you from the location? Seneca will give me an ETA again. And, and I will email the broker again and be like, Seneca is 100 miles away from the location. So I will send him probably like 10 emails throughout the you know the the trip and then i did that with the first one you know the whole time and he was he was grateful for it he will email me back he will reply back to each email and be say thank you uh thank you for the update great thank you i'm glad he made it there you know things like that so i did that with the first one send him the letter um the second one i see that he had posted at that load again the same load from the pop can every day i call him and i said hey i don't know if you remember me i'm so and so my husband so and so we took a load for you you know from you and uh you know we're in a pop car if you remember me like you know my truck is in a pop car and he was like oh my god like i was just actually i was just thinking about calling you to ask if you had a truck available and uh, i was like yeah seneca's available so he gave us that second load again same thing you know great communication and everything i to make sure my bacon is not burning um i like it burn you, i know you like it burn. <laughs> <laughs> so great communication with that second load and everything again and then after seneca completed that second load he the broker sent me an email and he said you know maria i am really happy with the service that you guys ha are, um, are providing you know with the loads i need somebody to take loads at least three times a week the same load the same the exact same load the, the same location right no it's the same route the same route i'm sorry wait a minute. The, the same route yeah. you know it was the, the same weight of the load mm -hmm. the same rate everything so the same miles it was to the same location round trip so he said i'm really happy with the service you guys are providing i need somebody to take you know these loads for me at least three times a week he said okay if i just email you when i have the next one ready instead of posting it on the low board and i was like yes i was so happy i was like oh my god oh my god this is so awesome i was so happy we in the game now. <laughs> yeah, i'm like we got somebody to trust us coach like, put us in yeah <laughs> like now we can't like now we're gonna be looking at the low board you know all day so that's how we ended up building that relationship with him. So we did that for what, like, until we got our uh, basically got the, trailer. The, the the trailer. So yeah. it was, 
we was really blessed. I will say that, you know, starting a new business and all of that, we was really blessed uh, to have, have made that connection with him. And, you know, to get those loads, it was power only, and everybody knows that the loads, power only, or any loads, don't pay anything out of Florida. Like, we all know that. Yeah. But for being power only, we was getting, what, like $2,000 something. How much was we getting? Um, I don't even it's remember. roughly about two. About, yeah, it was about $2,000. No, it, it, it was, um... 1950. Yeah, it was somewhere around yeah. like close to the two thousand dollars. But I mean, it still accumulated yeah. to about it was five, like a little bit over five thousand every week. Every week, yeah. yeah. And it was about two dollars and I want to say two dollars twenty nine, two dollars forty nine, somewhere around there, two two dollars and some change per mile. So it wasn't like the best of the best, but it was not the worst either for we, being, we was you know. New. And we was new. It was new. It was new. And not many people was willing to work with us. So mm -hmm. to get in the game and have a plug with a broker, you know, that's a that's a good thing to start off with. Not everybody can get a plug immediately no. with a broker. Usually they got to jump through a million hoops. They got to wait their time with their uh, operating authority, which is in most cases three months four months and we already had a, a direct plug right in between that time before we even hit 90 days yeah we already was running routes you know making good money so making decent money yeah it's more money than i i ever seen but i know i know I ain't never lived like that before. Huh? I, was I like, know. What? It was. It was. Like I said, for us, it was a blessing, you know, yeah. that we um, made that contact. And you know, I'm telling you guys, like new, you know, new authorities out there. Um, I'm just giving you like these tips that work for us. I'm not saying that they're gonna work for everybody. I don't know, but it's what I did. I just took action on. So I have always worked in customer service like my whole life basically. So I feel like I'm like good with people. Uh, I don't know, but I feel like I am. So I implemented those skills of, you know, trying to be good with people in customer service to, you know, typing that letter, creating that letter with Seneca's information, making sure that, you know, he received it, you know, explaining things, you know, presenting basically my company, my business and the driver to the broker so that he knew who, you know, who he was dealing with. And, you know, like I said, that worked great for us. And making sure that you're communicating with the broker, especially when you're new. Making sure that yeah. you're communicating with the broker because they don't trust you already because they know that you're new. Mm -hmm. And if you're not communicating with that load, like where that load is, when you're going to be there, are you there, are you going to make it there? Like to me, that was like so important that I did that. And it worked for us. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, as the driver, I had to make sure I did everything perfect. Yeah, yeah. That was important. You know, no men of master mistakes. Yeah, you might not do everything perfect every single time, but even if you do mess up, just notify the broker, let them know like, hey, I'm I'm an hour behind, I'm in traffic. You know, just let's you know, simple things like that. But for the most part, you know, I I did everything to the best of my ability and the I guess the broker liked it. <laughs> so yeah, it did. yeah, I mean it, it was it was an easy route. It was. Actually, it was, super easy. it was a very easy route. And it was a lighter load too. I don't remember it was only how like many. 20, like twenty eight. It was like twenty eight thousand yeah. pounds. It was like yeah. it was a, um, a drive van with empty barrels in it, yeah. and it had to go to a place to get cleaned, I guess, so they could bring the barrels back. I, I brought the clean ones back to the facility. Yeah. Took the dirty ones out, and it, it was a whole trailer full full of barrels. So that, that was that was a cakewalk. It was. Yes, it was. <laughs> that was an easy five grand like every week. So and you know for and power new, only for power only on top of new, that. Yeah. We don't even got a trailer. We just started and already got a direct plug and yeah we had a few runs you know local here and there, but I preferred those. Yeah. Other guys it was like we had another one that was around the corner. It was in, in uh, Lake Mary. Yeah. We had yeah. that one. Yeah. But it didn't pay as much. So like, he would like email me, you know, asking me, hey, do you want to take this load? So we had three brokers. It was Ross, it was Joshua, Joshua. and then uh, um, the other one from Orlando, the one from the, the loads in uh, uh, Disney. Uh, what was his name? Oh, I, don't, I don't remember his name. Paolo. Paolo. It was Paolo. Paolo, actually. He's called me. He's the one that I told you that he's called me the other day. Yeah. 
Uh, it was so it, it was three local brokers, but the one that we did the most business with it was uh, Russ, Russ from uh, um, from Russ a pub pain. club. Yeah, he was pay he's the one that was paying us the most and giving us the more more consistent loads, I guess. That was that that was the important thing, like yeah. consistency. Yeah. You know the the other loads we had, like yeah, we we ran them when they when they got the actual um, customer. You know, to, to um, yeah, I guess when the customer notified them or whatever, and they had the, you know the actual job, they gave it to us, but it wasn't as often as it was Ross. A couple times a month. Yeah. With the, yeah. So it wasn't the best. Yeah. And then um, Ross was consistent. Yeah, Ross was very consistent with us. So. I mean, I wish I could just pass the plug to somebody else. You know what? I, tell you the truth. Like, I wish somebody had like a, just, a, a, just a power a, only. Yeah, just a power yep. only. And I'm like, yep. hey, talk to this broker. Yeah. That company's around the corner. Yeah. Go get your, do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yep. So, so I kind of I kind of felt the way when we got our trailer. I know. I we had to too. leave Ross behind yeah. and not work for him anymore. And I he was know. good to us. And it, it was kind of like, I was so like sad to send him that email when he emailed me the last time. And he's like, hey, Maria, I have another load. Is Seneca ready? I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, hey, Ross. Right, so deck. actually, we just purchased our step deck and we're going to start doing uh, step deck loads now from now on. Like, I am so sorry. But I was like, but I am so grateful for you and, you know, working with you was a pleasure and all of that. I sent him a long email, you know, just telling him how grateful we was, you know, for all of that. And he was like, okay, well, I wish you guys the best of luck. And if you ever, if you ever go back to doing power only, yes, you know, reach out to me. These loads are going to be here forever. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I, I was kind of sad, actually, because it was such an easy transaction with him. Easy. Like, so easy. It got to the point where he, he was just... I could be on the road and he was talking to me directly yeah. and I just shoot him a text message the party yeah. arrived or whatever and yeah. or I shoot it to um, my wife and she would she would relay it for me yeah. so it was pretty simple but so for some of you guys that money might not be a lot uh, you know everybody's situation is different you know I'm not judging you know you gotta make what works for you we make what works for us so for us at that time at that moment that was great because we was just getting started and the other thing that was really important for us was that Seneca was able to be home every other night like you know yeah. this was round trip he would leave and be gone that day and then come back home the next day so he was home like every other night and we were still making you know decent money for you know power only yeah, because being a company driver, it, it was um, straining. So you know? tell them about um, t you know tell them about your experience with trucking you know, from the from the beginning. Like how how do you got into trucking into civilian trucking? The military, and that, that's the start. Um, I, I I joined the military back in the year two thousand. You know, joined as a, a truck driver in the army. I was stationed. Fort Lewis, I drove trucks roughly from that point, you know, the year 2000, all the way up to this point. So I had you know, roughly about 15, 16 years of just driving big vehicles, period. So, you know, it, it was never, um, oh, then after that, then being in the military for so long driving trucks, I, I just felt like I wanted to transfer my experience over to the civilian civilian side of things and I felt like if I could drive trucks in the service and be on deployments and be in combat zones driving <laughs> driving vehicles I, I a semi is a cakewalk so I went went to go get my CDL got it um, then I started I got my CDL at Roadmaster uh, school and then one thing, um, so since Seneca is a be uh, veteran, you know, army veteran, the the military paid for his schooling. It was yeah. gonna cost what, like nine thousand or something like that. I don't remember. No, I think it was like, about nine thousand. I think it was like eight, eight, eight seven, something so, like that. Yeah, close to like the. It 9, was a lot 000. of money. It was a lot of money. <laughs> 
but you know, being that he uh, that he's a, a veteran, the military paid for it. The yeah, the military paid, paid for, for my um, yeah. CDL school. So, yeah. But the catch was, I had to work for Warner, and I'm like, cool, you know, I can get my foot, you know, my foot in the door as far as like a truck driver. So, I drove for Warner for about six months. Um, I don't got nothing bad to say about Warner. I mean, everybody knows how these companies, you know, these companies are these truck companies and what they pay these drivers, but they let me in. So I was always grateful for it. I, I'm not gonna complain about the pay rate, and <laughs> but uh, it was still more money than I was making previously. So it was like, um, as a company driver, I was making about, about 60. And there's not too many jobs out there that's paying $60,000 entry. So I'm like, okay, I'll take that. It's all good. I know ne we never had plans on me, you know, being a company driver anyway for for a long a long period. So we already had a plan. To just uh, and the plan was, you know, just to eventually become owner operators, and it happened sooner than than later. Sooner than we thought. Yeah. So for us, it was, um, you know, with Seneca uh, separating from the military, um, we, you know, we wanted to do something that we wanted to invest in a business that we, that was going to give us the opportunity to spend more time together. You know, Seneca being in the military and, you know, other jobs that he had after that, he was always gone. You know, he was either gone for, you know, weeks at a time or gone, you know, working nights and things like that. So it was really difficult, you know, in the marriage to have that, you know, that time together. Like I was, I was so, you know, tired of sleeping by myself every single night, but, you know, understanding that that's what we had it to do at the time. So we said, you know what, we got to come up with a plan and invest in a business where we can actually spend, you know, time together, make it work for us. And, uh, and that's what we did. So a little bit of background about myself. Um, I was a hairstylist, a master barber for almost 20 years. Um, so I worked in, um, a, at a military barber shop for the majority of my hair cutting career. Um, I worked in uh, uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. That's actually where me and Seneca met. <laughs> so I worked at the military barber shop in, uh, in Fort Lewis, Washington. Um, I was the general manager for all of the shops inside the base. Uh, and, you know, it was a, a great job. It was a good paying job that, you know, gave me the opportunity to, uh, you know, to save a lot of money. I have always been a frugal person. So, you know, it, it, having a job that pays good money is always helpful to, like, get ahead of the game, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so then from there, you know, we, uh, like I said, we, you know, we decided that, okay, we're going to, you know, use Seneca's skill set that he already had to get into trucking. And we thought about getting a box truck at the beginning, the, right? Yeah, the box truck um, idea didn't work. So we was just like, um, I mean, because the, the box truck, it, we was gonna eventually get a semi, but we was gonna start off with a box truck and just like slowly try to get into, you know, having a whole semi. When that deal fell through, when it didn't work out, so. We went um, with the semi. We just leapfrogged and said, forget it, let's just get a semi. Get the box truck, it's less money, let's just go get the semi. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and start the business from there. So. so what had happened was um, with that situation with the box truck, so both of us, we have like perfect credit. So we went to the bank, we went to Navy Federal, we asked for a loan to purchase. I want to say all that, but go ahead. <laughs> no. So we asked for a loan to purchase um, the box truck. The box truck was what, like six, I think it was 60,000. It, it, it was 60,000. Yeah, it was a newer box truck. So it was $60,000. We asked for a loan to purchase it. Like we, ha we, we had, did we already have our authority? I think that we have just got the authority and everything. So just I was, got yeah, it. we had just got the authority. Mm -hmm. We was looking for the truck. 
So we applied for the loan with Navy Federal. Navy Federal came back and said, we do not loan money on uh, new ventures. You guys are, you know, new, like brand new. Seneca have only had his CDO for like not long, you know, after, you know, before that. It was not a year yet. It was not a year. So they, so. what they told me, I don't know if they have changed the rules ever since, or I, I don't know, I haven't, you know, asked anymore. But what they told me was that they did